Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Now, before I begin, I have a couple announcements to make. Firstly, as of July 3rd, 2023, I have just created my own Patreon page in order to earn a monthly income by providing rewards and perks to subscribers like you. And I admit, this is something that I should have done a long time ago, especially due to the fact that I'm getting close to going broke. No thanks to my mom, who never takes me seriously. Anyway, if you'd like to support me and become a Patreon, or make a request for my YouTube series, just go to my Patreon page, and believe me, that would be absolutely great. As for my second announcement, well, before creating said Patreon page, I created a poll on DeviantArt asking everybody what they'd like me to blog during this month. And so far, judging by this chart, today's episode is going to require a certain backstory. Now this may not be entertaining to some of you, but it is relevant for what you're about to watch. Now, those of you who follow me might know that The Swan Princess is one of my personal favorite animated films ever. In fact, it's one of my top 30, despite the fact that I never saw it in theaters when I was little. But after renting the movie from Netflix in 2004, I thought it was a really wonderful movie, despite its poor performance at the box office, mainly due to competition with The Lion King. Still, I am happy that I was introduced to the Swan Princess by seeing a promo while watching In Search of Dr. Seuss. Also, starting in my second season in 2014, I began supporting the Swan Princess franchise by blogging the fifth movie, A Royal Family Tale, which to this day is still my most viewed blog ever, and you can bash me if you want, but with every film that I've looked at in this franchise, I enjoy them for what they feature, like memorable characters, old or new, fun and catchy songs, thrilling adventures, emotional stories, hilarious humor, and so on. And ever since 2020, The Swan Princess has become one of the few franchises that have reached the double digits, like Final Fantasy, the James Bond franchise, Halloween, The Land of War Time, and just recently, Fast and Furious. Also to note, as of early 2019, I became the very first featured fan on the Swan Princess website, and yet, I'm still curious as to why Eden Young chose me as the first one. Plus, me and my sister got to attend the Swan Princess 25th anniversary pink carpet event in Los Angeles, which was, believe it or not, a really magical experience for me. Not only did I see the movie on the big screen, but I also made a friend with Nathan Higa, who happens to be my number one fan. I even got to meet the director, Richard Rich, and the producer, Selden Young. Also, I got to see the tribute to Odette's first voice actress, Michelle Nicastro, who sadly died from breast and brain cancer in 2010, as well as Anna Graceman singing her Season of Love song from the 2012 Christmas movie, and Liz Calloway and David Burnham singing Far Longer Than Forever. Also, during the COVID-19 virus lockdown, after receiving movie number 10, A Royal Wedding, along with this certificate and this animation cell as a belated birthday present, I made a top 10 countdown video with movie number seven, Royally Undercover, taking the number one spot. In June 2021, me, along with several other Swan Princess fans, got to help promote their commemorative watches. And last year, in late summer 2022, I sent an email asking the question, how many years has passed between the stories of the eighth Swan Princess movie, A Royal Mystery, and the ninth movie in the franchise, Kingdom of Music, and they answered, about five years has passed for the characters of Swan Lake between the two films, which meant that Odette's daughter, Elise, was 11 years old in movie number eight, 
before she grew up into a beautiful 16-year-old princess in movie number nine. And now, after a three-year-long hiatus, The Swan Princess has reached its 11th movie, which of course is the subject of my blog today. But what does it have in store for us this time? Well, let's find out. Released a DVD on May 23rd, 2023, the movie is The Swan Princess, A Fairy Tale is Born. Now, on to the plot of the movie. Before becoming queen, Uberta has lived a humble life with her husband, Maximilian, when she is suddenly thrust into royalty. Through triumph and tragedy, she learns the lessons needed to become a beloved queen, all while raising the next generation of rulers. 25 years later, when it's time for Uberta to pass the royal scepter to Odette and Derek, rival queen Wixom has plans of her own to ruin the kingdom's greatest coronation. So, what do I personally think of the movie? Well, to me, this movie was very nostalgic, charming, fun, and emotional. And I consider it a good film. And to further explain what I mean, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, firstly, this is the first Swan Princess film to be a prequel, although it also includes elements that take place after the 10th movie, A Royal Wedding, and it's the second animated fairy tale film overall to have a prequel after The Little Mermaid Ariel's beginning. Plus, this film is the first time since A Royal Family Tale where we see Derek's best friend, Bromley. As for the animation, well, I understand that most of you out there are still not a fan of the CGI animation, but to be honest, it doesn't look that bad, and I think the Kingdom of Schomburg looks pretty good. Plus, I thought the whole backstory flashback revolving around Uberta becoming queen was pretty interesting, and I like the plots involving the Council of Crowns, which is a group of ten rulers working together to spread good and protect one another. Also, I kind of get the feeling that one of the queens on that council looked almost like the Queen of Trombeau from movie number seven. Also, I like how the council resolves certain problems like thieves and pirates. Not only that, but some of my favorite scenes in this movie include the part where Baby Odette is born, and this is the third time it was shown in this franchise. Plus, I like the part during the present segment where the Kingdom of Schomburg gets things set up for Odette and Derek's coronation, and I thought the ceremony, despite it being sabotaged by our rival queen, was just so beautiful. And I liked the moment where the film showed several flashbacks from previous movies, not just from the first movie, but also from A Royal Family Tale, Princess Tomorrow, Pirate Today, Royally Undercover, Kingdom of Music, and a royal wedding. Also, I thought the film's ending was really tear-jerking, where Marcus shows Derek and Odette a painting of King Maximilian. However, one thing about this film kind of makes me wonder what the evil enchanter Rothbart was doing during the flashback, since that was a time before he made a deal with the Forbidden Arts and before he was banished by King William. Now let's talk about three of the songs feature in this movie. First, there's That's What It Takes to Be a Queen, which is a montage song where Uberta learns the basics of being queen at Schomburg. To me, this song is very whimsical, and I like how it goes from Chamberlain and the castle staff training Uberta to her time at King William and Queen Aubrey's tea party to getting a royal makeover before getting coronated. Next is the Royal Dog Show, where Uberta's dogs, whom she names this, that, and the other, compete against Queen Wixom's poodles. To me, this is a pretty decent song, and I like that the competition tests each dog team with their grace and beauty, their mental sharpness, and a race. Speaking of which, 
My favorite moment is when one of Wixom's poodles lets the mutts win the race as thanks for saving him from getting stuck underneath one of the obstacles. The last song to talk about is See Another Side, which is sung by Odette and her mother, Aubrey, on the night before hers and Derek's coronation. To me, this song is absolutely beautiful and emotional, and it really has a nice message about seeing things from a different perspective. And now, let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. Our main character, Queen Uberta, is voiced by Catherine Levine, who also narrated a royal family tale and has been voicing Bridget ever since 2012. To me, while she did have some ups and downs throughout the film series, I found her role in this movie to be pretty interesting and very sympathetic. You see, before becoming Queen of Schomburg, Uberta and her husband, Maximilian, used to live in a broken down cottage until her grand uncle passed away. Also, throughout the flashback, I like that Uberta pursues a cause to save unwanted dogs from the pound. And after winning the dog show, she gives the three champion mutts to a loving family. Also, I like that Uberta helps Derek and Odette prepare for their coronation. However, I think her reason for stepping down as queen just to become an opera star seems kind of silly if you ask me. Next is her husband, King Maximilian, voiced by Jesse LaPierre. To me, Maximilian seems like a very daring and noble king, and I find it pretty funny that he calls his wife Bertie, which, believe it or not, is a special hidden Easter egg which references the name of Selden Young's mother. Also, I like the parts where Max helps a group of thieves led by his cousin Peter find work, and when he helps teach his son, young Prince Derek, the catch and fire archery technique, which came in handy when he fought Rothbart years later. Also, I thought the scene where Max is presumed dead not long after a pirate attack was a very emotional moment. Next we come to Odette's late parents, King William, voiced by Michael Sorich, and Queen Aubrey, voiced by Mila Lee. To me, both William and Aubrey are kind rulers, and I think they make nice supporting characters during the flashback segment. Also to note, William serves as a member of the Council of Crowns, and after Maximilian's presumed death, William and King Ivan come across Max's journal in the wreckage and agreed that said journal would remain private and hidden away. As for Aubrey, well, I think she sticks out more than William does due to her helping Uberta in certain situations. And I like the scene where she covers for Uberta after she accidentally broke a teacup and when she complimented her on how she plays the teacup like an instrument. Plus, I thought the scene where Aubrey dies while giving birth to Odette was very, very heartbreaking. And the moment where she meets with Odette as an angel during her See Another Side song was very touching. Our next character is Lord Balthazar Rogers, voiced by Joseph Medrano, who's also been voicing the legend-seeking Scullion ghost, Scully. Before becoming a member of Uberta's royal court, Rogers used to be an educational doctor. During the movie, he's been assigned by Uberta to train the three mutts for the dog show, and later, after he was given the Lord title by Uberta, he's tasked to look after young Derek. Also, I like how Rogers sets up the outdoor stage for Odette and Derek's coronation using an underground machine. As for the other characters, we have King Sebastian, the ruler of Baromeo, voiced by Joe Oachman, who was also Trapper the Raccoon in the Bigfoot movies, and he voiced Jiminy Cricket in Kingdom Hearts 3 and the HD re-release of Coded. Plus, he also voices King Ivan. For those who may not remember, King Sebastian appeared in three previous movies, Royally Undercover, 
of royal mystery and kingdom of music. And he was the one who adopted number nine, AKA Jasper. During the flashback part of the movie, Sebastian was the chairman of the Council of Crowns. But later in the film, after Sebastian steps down, he nominates King Maximilian. However, after his presumed death, King Ivan becomes Maximilian's replacement. And in my opinion, throughout this movie's flashback, King Ivan is another memorable character and a good friend to several of his fellow royals. And now let's move on to Princess Odette and her husband, Prince Derek, voiced by Nina Herzog and Yuri Lowenthal. To me, both Odette and Derek get some nice character development during the flashback segment. However, their roles in this movie truly shine during the present, when they're about to become the new rulers of Schomburg. And after finding out from Uberta, they feel a bit unsure about it, due to it being a bit too soon for them. However, during the preparations, they become encouraged to be great rulers due to all the support from their friends and family. Plus, I really love that speech that Odette makes regarding Uberta, which really shows that Odette is not only the swan princess, but also the true queen of queens. Next are Odette's animal friends, Speed, Puffin, and Jean Bob, voiced by Doug Stone, Gardner Jass, and Clayton James. Now, their roles in this movie don't really add much, but I think they're still as lovable, funny, and cute like in previous films, even though Jean Bob is still a very obnoxious and delusional frog who still believes himself to be a prince, and I think he looks ridiculous while wearing red pants. Also, I like the scene where all three of them try to stop Queen Wixom from sabotaging the coronation by jamming the gears with a hammer. We also have Odette and Derek's daughter, Princess Elise, and her boyfriend, Lucas, voiced by Blo Ethan and Grant Durazzo. Now, believe me when I say that I was really happy to see these two lovebirds again after four years due to them being in Borromeo for a tulip festival while Odette and Derek were visiting Cathay, helping Princess Mei Li and Chen, and eliminating Fang's evil powers. Anyway, I still think Elise and Lucas make a wonderful couple after they shared a true love's kiss during her coming of age ball, which also saved Chen from his dragon curse. And during this movie, Uberta assigns Elise and Lucas to crown Odette and Derek and she also names Lucas as an official prince as gratitude for his sacrifice and service to Schomburg. Though I feel that his prince title should have been official during movie number seven after his and Elise's spy mission. Also, I really love the part where they kiss in the treasury and I really pray that they get married in the next movie. Finally, we come to the film's main antagonist, Queen Wixom, voiced by Lynn Gallagher. Fun fact, Queen Wixom was previously mentioned in The Swan Princess, A Royal Family Tale, where it was revealed that Uberta wants to have grandchildren and that Wixom hasn't had any yet. Anyway, in this movie, Wixom is Uberta's greatest rival, and to me, She's not as threatening, scary, or as evil compared to villains like Zelda or Fang. Because I find her to be pompous, arrogant, and a bit of a sore loser. I mean, she wasn't very happy after finding out about Uberta's cause for saving unwanted dogs and her poodles losing against the mutts during the dog show. But years later... After seeing Madame Lacroix's opera show, Wixom gets real angry when she finds out that Lacroix is actually Uberta due to a permanent autograph that she wrote on her arm. And during Odette and Derek's coronation, Wixom plans to ruin the celebration by having a group of dogs howl behind the orchestra and she sabotages Roger's machine in order to disassemble the stage. Thankfully, 
Her plan was foiled thanks to Jean Bob, Speed, and Puffin jamming the gears and Odette's beautiful speech, which made Wixom leave in a huff. And now on to my final words. Overall, The Swan Princess, A Fairy Tale is Born is a pretty good addition to this strong, independent, animated film franchise. The CGI animation is pretty good. I thought the flashback part of the film was interesting, nostalgic, emotional, and touching, and I love how it gives character development for Uberta, along with King William and Queen Aubrey. Also, I think the songs were pretty charming. The classic characters like King Sebastian, Chamberlain, Lord Rogers, Bridget, Ferdinand, Speed, Puffin, and Jean Bob are great supporting characters, including new ones like King Ivan and Magnus. And it was absolutely wonderful to see Elise and Lucas again. And I do pray that they become husband and wife soon. Plus, I think Queen Wixom as the antagonist is okay. But she doesn't hold a candle to some of the previous villains like Rothbart, Clavius, Zelda, Antonio, Niccolo, or even Fang. As for Odette and Derek, well, I know for a fact that they'll be a wonderful king and queen, and they'll make very inspirational rulers for Schomburg's future. As for my rating, I'll give it an 83% out of 100. But do you know what the sad thing is? This is the second to last movie in the Swan Princess film series, and I hear that the final movie will be released next year in 2024. So, while I am sad to see the Swan Princess franchise end, at the same time, I do hope it goes out with a standing ovation. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog. Mustang Power.